and um uh we just stood outside and like we go through like wardrobe and uh and then they take me to hair and makeup and they're like can we shave your head i'm like uh sure whatever you need to do <laughs> they're like we'll pay you extra to shave your head so i got this like skin head haircut uh, and then they they start chick- chucking extra tattoos on me. They put a swastika on my forehead. And, oh boy! And <laughs> yeah, um, and then uh, and then we so we go out into this like uh, prison yard, and it's like the the scene we're filming is this like prison yard scene where the 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 main character goes out into the prison yard, and we're stood there in the freezing cold, and we have these like really thin prison uniforms on and it's like it's starting to rain slightly and it's like we've been doing this scene for about six hours and uh and then and then suddenly like we've we've been filming on our own um and then uh, this woman comes running over and she holds an umbrella over this guy's head and like is is like combing his hair, and I'm like, why the frick does that dickhead get an umbrella? And we're stood here in the pouring <laughs> rain. Turned turn out it was only Joel Kinnaman, and I'm like, oh, I, did, I had no idea who he was, and he was like stood feet from me, and like, <laughs> that's an actor for you. <laughs> He's the chameleon. Uh, like so, like why does this guy get an umbrella? Uh, it's not fair. No, um, not just this guy, but why this dickhead, in your words, right? How dare he? Uh, oh, yeah, okay. exactly. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, so we get we, we film this scene. It's pretty fun. Um, I'm not going to give too much away, cause, but the, uh, the film comes out on August the 30th in the UK movie theatres, so I don't know whether it's... And it's called what, the, again? The... The Informer. The Informer, I like it like a book like an AM. I let you boom boom. That was actually the name of the Toronto white rapper back from the mid '90s. He had a hit called Informer. So sorry for dropping that uh, useless knowledge on you. But um, all right, so this uh, we got about five minutes. Okay. Uh, give or take. Talking to rap. Well, we're gonna talk. Uh, you said to put a pin in time travel. All right. Yeah. Um, well, I was just gonna say, talking to t- talking to rappers, um, when I when we were on set, the the rapper Common was mm. in the film as well. Yeah, uh, and uh, I I had the opportunity to take a photo of him, but I so we weren't supposed to have phones on set, but we were getting into character. We had our phones in our socks and stuff, so mm. room, so we were getting you know, uh, and I'm like, I had the opportunity to take a photo of him, and I'm like. All that came out of my mouth was like, I got a swastika in my head, so it's probably not appropriate, right? And he just laughs, and I walk away, and I'm like, to this day, I'm like, I should have just taken a photo with him. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been the poster to promote unity in this country. Common, a man, and a, a skinhead with Nazi. Bring us together, John! Well, yeah. we'll just pray that the Lord the Lord opens other opportunities. See, right now, if we had time travel abilities, you can go back. Uh, hey, John, take the bloody picture. Uh, how would you say, you muppet? <laughs> you muppet. Um, so, yeah, time travel. So, it's an interesting one. And this is like, um, to this day, I don't know what quite happened or why or... Uh, but I, I feel I sh- the, the fact that I need to preface this with like saying it's a hundred percent true story sounds like it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you because I have plenty of those stories that people go oh, whatever. Anyway, yeah. go ahead. But, uh, so I, I think I was about fifteen, sixteen, and I'm driving in a car with my parents, and we've just left a like church meeting. At the time, we lived uh, in a place called Devon, which is the southwest coast. Uh, was it Devon or was it? I'm trying to think. If I was fifteen, no. So we would have been living in Brighton at the time, which is the southeast coast, and we were traveling from. Yeah, I think we were traveling from Swindon, and I think we were in the process of 
of trying out churches or in the middle of moving because we went from Brighton to Swindon. Um, and like, so if you look on a map, they're about three and a half hours drive apart. Um, and so we're leaving Swindon and we're about 10 minutes into this journey. And suddenly I don't know how, what happened. We're in a place called Salisbury, Salisbury. which is about... Sorcery. Oh, okay. Like, sorcery, like witchcraft. Sorry. So, we're in a sorcery, not sorcery. Um, (laughs) And if you look on the map, Sorcery is not next to Swindon. It's not a 10 minute drive from Swindon. So, I don't know how or why, but we were driving 10 minutes out of Swindon and suddenly we're in Salisbury. And my parents are like, how the flip did we get here? What is happening? And we didn't know what to do. So we just ended up driving around Salisbury for like half an hour, like just praying because we're like, why, how, what is going on? Um, And I... I just remember it vividly. Like we we traveled. Yeah, are you googling it on a map right now? No, I'm writing it down because I'm gonna check that out later. <laughs> no, but yeah, we literally ten minutes out of Swindon and we're in Salisbury, and we don't know how we got there, what happened, why it happened to this hmm. day. So we just ended up praying, and yeah, and so that that yeah, an experience of. I guess time travel, but like, or maybe like yeah. a, a, a black hole or a wormhole that you just boop, boop, yeah. in one side out the other, man. Like I said, you're now that portal to enter people into the courts of heaven for a spell, right? You I mean you got to think when they when you set foot in eternity, uh, you could be gone for like two minutes in this reality, but be in his presence for like two years, two decades, two generations, right? And they just come right back into it. You know, that's what... Um, I just want to get people just to even just entertain that thought, right? To think that uh, this relationship with an infinite, omnipotent, omniscient God who sees my entire life and holds it in the palm of his hands, right? The universe, that, uh, yeah, it might be possible to do that. So, mm. uh, whew! It's, it's, it's awesome people like yourself that uh, has had some experiences and um, obviously to see that uh, measure of God's anointing in your life. Uh, I'm so thankful that he brought you to Salt Lake City so we could have met all those years ago. And uh, mm-hmm. look forward. I, I've never been overseas. I don't even own a passport. Right, so I'm I'm gonna live dangerously if uh, Lord translates me there because I'm not gonna have a passport to get on a flight back. <laughs> so he'll have to send me back somehow. You know, you might have to build a closet or something. <laughs> I, love, I love I love the faith, and I'm I'm so for it. But you know, you could actually just get a passport and come fly out. That is saying. true. That is true, and it is. You know, I also believe too. Um, well, I'm gonna stop. This is part one. And uh, I'm going to go on to to part two, ladies and gentlemen, of the Where's Wadlow podcast uh, with Mr. John Derry. Since you are the 20th episode, it might as well be a two-parter because we're not going to allow 90 minutes to get in the way of us now as we really start talking into the fun stuff of time travel and (laughs) (laughs) traveling insane distances but kind of also the the touch back on this this, this topic of death, right? And because um, our country is is divided as it's ever been, as far as I remember, right? Because I grew up in the magical time of the eighties, right? I was born in nineteen seventy seven. I was a child in the eighties, and uh, in the California Bay Area, you know, nonetheless. <laughs> heaven on earth for a kid something just fell over there okay we're shaking the devil he's scared he's trying to attack me but uh 
Because I'm time traveling right now, man. I'm talking from the future through me, a vessel, into John. I suddenly picked up a southern accent there. So. <laughs> I don't know what's happening, man. Okay. <laughs> Um, it's kind of like it, the thing that reminds me of like being John Malkovich. Well, we'll just go to the next portal. <laughs> and I come out and I'm like, gosh. Man. Yeah, that film. I think I've only seen it like a couple of times, but I just, yeah. That film, you know, I love, I've, you know, there's a couple things that um, I think kind of separate me from a lot of Christians is. I think, you know, not. I'm not tooting my own horn and I'm not advocating these things, but um, I come in, I came into this place. I know straight edge is you don't do anything, right? I mean, you don't mm. drink, you don't smoke. Um, oh. You know, I, I am a, you know, I think I definitely believe that everything, when it says everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial, right? And it is like kind of going back into benefits, Right benefits. Yep. Um, I found I found great benefit uh, from partaking of cannabis, uh, sativa or cannabis indica, but uh, the icky sticky green herb, um, and that's something that it was. You know, I lived in a state where it was completely legal. Now I live in the yeah. South where I'm a criminal again. Right, and so it's this weird. I mean, this is like the duality of this nation on so many different levels. But it's funny, like Americans on the West can smoke and partake of this herb that grows from the ground whenever they want. Yep. But me, an American here, uh, no, I'm a criminal, and I'm gonna get a fine and or arrested. And if, like, say I have it in my car, say I have my girls in the car, bam, girls get taken from me, and it's just like. There's so many things just going on of, of just seeing how messed up it is, but it's not getting in the place of just complaining about it and just trying to like sinners, you know, this and that, but it is trying to come up with solutions and things um, that are going to bring us together, not just keep driving us apart. And so you think of somebody like, you know, President Trump, I don't know what your take is or your opinion of the man is. And I don't really have, you know, I can honestly say there's a lot of things in this character that I don't care for at all. I think, you know, I would love to have seen him progress as a human being and just being civil and in discourse. But he's just kind of gotten to this character of president and he's a performer at heart. And so he's living the role now. Um, yeah. But also at the same time, he's doing things that no other president in our nation has ever done in a form or fashion. But there's also a lot of things that um, it's done as far as bringing up a lot of this angst, right? A lot of this ca cancer and poison that's just been underneath the surface of this nation, right? For centuries, right? Because we're a nation that's built upon the backs of slaves. That we literally just came from, we, we said peace out to y'all. Right, yeah. <laughs> and we took our disease and our sickness, and we brought it to America, and we infected the people that were here, and we killed off, and genocide, and well, God bless America now. <laughs> but, you know, we had the greatest of intentions at heart, but somewhere yeah. along the way, we really kind of uh, dropped the ball. <laughs> One of my one of my favorite memes is like, how do you celebrate Independence Day? And it's like, oh, you just uh, knock on someone's door, enter in, and go, oh yeah, I live here now. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, one thing that uh, I've been exposed to through this podcast and people have on and, and their points of view is that um, the black man, as we know him, and here in America we call them African Americans, aren't necessarily from Africa. Like if you look at people from Africa and you look at African Americans in America, you can see there are differences that is noticeable in features. Um, mm. And so their take is that we didn't ship over tens and hundreds of millions of Africans to come over here to be the slaves. We came, they had already established themselves here and we enslaved them. And, yeah. you know, uh. That's something I was like, well, I was never taught that. That 
is completely contrary to everything I've known. Um, but that's one thing is like, there's a lot of things in the Bible that are completely contrary to everything I've grown up believing, you know, and, and the biggest thing is, what is the whole purpose and point of why are we here? And it's not to, like we say to pray a prayer so that when we die, we go to heaven. It's about becoming the bride of Christ, his queen and ruling and reigning here on earth. Was that, that that Bible verse that says this is eternal life, and it's like, like this is the eternal life is now. It's like, yeah, yep. you like submit yourself to 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 God, and like the moment you like hand your life over to Christ, and you're like, you know, that's eternal life, and it's now you can time travel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. But, yeah. You know, would be you know would be a fun. This is just kind of like a movie idea. Let's say that you go back to where was it? Uh, Sal- Salisbury. Yeah. S a u l s b u r y. So uh, let's say it's, it's exactly like you would say Salisbury State. Okay, which is delicious. That was my, one of my favorite hungry man frozen TV dinners. But uh, <laughs> this would be fun. Is that you will go to Salisbury one day. And yeah. <laughs> you're going to see yourself and your family driving in the car, <laughs> driving by you, <laughs> and you're just going to wave, go, hey, <laughs> guess what? God's real um, on a whole other level than we've ever known, and I'm proof because uh, y'all just traveled here from the, the past, and uh, I'm from the future. And uh, have, you, have you ever seen... Um Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency. One more time. What was that? Dirk Dirk Gently, D-I-R-K, Gently. Um, and then it's Holistic Detective Agency. <laughs> Never have. Dude, I it, there was only ever two seasons of it made. It's fantastic. It's it's just a, obviously a warning, it's like hella violent and <laughs> Well, I just started on uh, Amazon Prime. I was up until 3.30 in the morning watching this new series, The Boys. Oh, I've been told about that, and I've been told I need to get into it. it but, uh, yeah. I mean, it kept me up till 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, yeah. dang it. But, um, like, in this in this Dirk Gent, like, it, it, you see it in the trailer, so I'm not really giving away too, too much, but um, it's got Elijah Wood in it, so Frodo. Um, oh, yeah, but he's like this, uh, this, this concierge at a hotel and like in the very first episode, this happens in like the first five minutes of the episode. So again, it's not really a spoiler, but he's, uh, he, he's gone up to a floor and he's like, there's been a disturbance on the floor of the hotel and, um, as he gets out the lift. Um, he sees himself stood there wearing like a big fur coat and like they just look at each other and then like it just it's just like what the heck just happened <laughs> like I'm not going to give anything more away but like you, you got to watch it it's just, just like but it's just that that thing of like time travel it's like um, and again I'm not not spoiling like time travel is it's, it's quite an obvious like moment of that particular series yeah. but yeah well, have you there's another there's a netflix series called russian doll with okay oh uh, i forget her name but i love her she whatever she's in i think she you know she really steals the scenes but it is kind of like she keeps dying and she keeps starting back at this one point in the middle of this party and um and she ends up meeting somebody else who is kind of going through he keeps rel- it's kind of like a groundhog day yeah. Right, and um, that is something like I kind of th- like when we said like this is eternal life, right? That you might know him, right? And we, it's understanding that we have the mind of Christ. So, what are our thoughts? That's why it's so important when the Bible says to hold your thoughts captive, right? Because it's either enabling the kingdom of heaven or it's inhibiting the kingdom of heaven, right? And so, what you're doing and what how you're like the level of faith that you're walking in will determine <laughs> what level of impossibility you'll be performing. 
Yeah, yeah. But obviously, you know, I'm not there yet. Uh, I'm just like, it would be awesome if all of a sudden you get a knock on the door and it's me <laughs> from the, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, all right, sweet. I've, I've always, yeah. I always wish this would be true because I've had experiences where I remember one time I went to go visit my buddies. We all did like a, we met up in Vegas and, yeah. um, and so we went the weekend in Vegas and I was getting, we were at the airport, you know, to take the flight back home. And all of a sudden the lady at the ticket counter, she's just like, what are you doing here? I'm like, what do you mean? What am I doing here? I'm here to go home. She's like, no, seriously, what are you doing here? And I'm like, seriously, I just want to go home. And then all of a sudden, like her face just goes, oh my God. You know how they say everybody has a twin on earth? I just met yours about 15 minutes ago. And I was like, word. You know, I'm like, okay. Um, you know, but the whole thing is like that whole weekend in Vegas, um, my buddies, we, we ended up getting separated all the time. So I spent a good majority of my time in Vegas alone. And all I did was just walked around the city, man. And there's there's people everywhere all night. I mean, there's it's Sin City. I mean, like nobody sleeps. Or and so I was having like these just amazing encounters with people. You know, people that were vacuuming like at four in the morning, and you know, just getting to love on them. And it was really like the first time in my life was just like, this is awesome. Like, yeah, wow. God, you're just like, wow. <laughs> and um, so when she was saying that, I was just kind of in this place of like, okay, maybe. <laughs> it's, so, it's so interesting. Just like the stuff that we we cannot physically explain and like people like try and put an explanation on it. But it's like, uh, so deja vu. Like mm-hmm. I... I had one experience of deja vu um, and I, I experienced this moment where I'm in a, like a wooden, uh, I was in a wooden structure and I was yelling down the side of this wooden structure um, at someone down the bottom. And I like, I didn't, I didn't know who they were. I didn't recognize them. Um, And I was just like, okay, that's, that's crazy. And I, I actually, I think I actually wrote it down, like what I saw, and I don't remember if it was like a, like almost like a vision or a dream or something like that. Um, but then, uh, I think it was about six months later, I was at this uh, high ropes course, and um, I was at the top of this huge, like. Uh, like rope slide so we're in the like uh i'm in my um what do you call it the thing harness that, harness thank you yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm in my, and uh i hear a voice yelling from at the bottom and i look over and it's this exact moment that i've experienced before like i've been there i've seen it mm-hmm. and, and it was like such a profound like deja vu it was like this there's no way to, you you know when like people are like oh deja vu it happens like seconds and it's like your brain processing it and then you you think you're experiencing it and it's like they they explain it that like deja vu is actually just something yeah that your brain happened twice but that 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 completely was not the case I'd experienced this moment six months before hmm. and I remember if it was like a dream or something but I just knew it was going to be a profound moment and I wrote it down and then I actually experienced it and I was at the, the in the harness at the top of this wooden like hut uh, about to like fling myself down this, this zip line uh-huh. and yelling at me from the bottom and I l- looked over and answered them and then I was like holy shit this is <laughs> Oh, you said a swear and it froze you up, buddy. <laughs> oh, oh, no. There you oh. are. There you are. Hallelujah. We, oh, quick recovery time. Yeah. Good job. Good job. 
I was like, you, yeah. you said your first swear word and you done froze up. <laughs> <laughs> you can't uh, mess up a Aaron. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Uh, yeah, but it was just like that, that thing of like we, it's, it's that things, there's little things in life that we have no explanation for. And people try and just like justify it by like, you know, oh, there must be a reasonable explanation for this. And actually, I think there is no reasonable explanation for what, you know, some of these things that happen, like that, why I ended up in Salisbury that one time. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, um, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah but it's fun to think about right of just kind of like okay um why are you like showing me this or what is this experience and really going to the holy spirit to have him teach you that because that's something that i feel that as the church that we're failing miserably in this country is equipping disciples and saints for warfare right Mm. and because we can see the effects of it. You got to understand, like, we, um, when I lived in uh, Washington State, I, we used to drive about an hour, hour and a half to this church in Kent. Like, we had to drive, like, all the way down underneath the peninsula and back up to Kent. And uh, there was this Russian church. And actually, I got introduced to it because Tommy and the guys in Sleeping Giant were doing a show at this church with Russian revivalists. So there's like this community of like Russians living in Kent, Washington, and um, Tommy and them, they're playing this church. And we started going there afterwards, and a good buddy of mine, Matthew Peden, who I've done this podcast with a few times, um, he said that he, I wasn't with him at this, this time, but he was there and he was praying. And he said that all of a sudden, he knew that he was... Standing on the water, um, I want to say outside of, oh, man, where was Gaddafi? Libya? Was that where Omar Gaddafi was? I'm going to sound so ignorant now. Oh, and I'm just, no. I'm stating facts as if I know where he was. We'll just say it was, it was in this area of the world where there was a dictator and, you know, horrific things were happening. But my buddy Matt said that he was literally standing on the water and yeah. this boat is a military boat or was coming at him and they had machine guns out and they literally were started firing. He said he saw like all the bullets just kind of like fizzling away as it got, you know, heading towards him. And um, he saw like everybody's like expressions on the boat and there's like there's fear on them. And they were wigged out, and he's just standing there. And then next thing he knows, he came right back into that church, and, and he was praying, you know, there on the floor of this church. And uh, I was just like, that's, oh, that's amazing. But then there's also testimonies of people at this church that are saying there's this kind of like tribe of people that literally are just translated all over the world. Their clothes never like wear out or get dingy or get stained. Um, you know, they rarely get even hungry. Um, but they're just like God's using them. And he says, he remember asking the Lord, like, well, Lord, why is this possible? Like, what's the point? And he's like, says that literally like the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. He's like, but what I can do with a few workers is far greater. And uh, yeah. that was something for me just to be like, okay, I'm going after this. Yeah. You know, and that's like how he's aligned me with people like Tommy, like yourself. And, uh, and it's also for us to, you know, spur this generation coming on behind us that is, I mean, like you said, there's no purpose to this life. It's just kind of YOLO. You, you, you get as much you know, <laughs> good loving you can get, get as much money as you can get, get as much stuff as you can get, and uh, eat, drink, and be merry because we're all going to die. And it's like, well, yeah. Yeah, um, you have no concept. Have you ever heard of eternal life? You know, And that's where you can just <laughs> yeah. kind of like, because guess what? 
if you're breathing, right? Kind of going back just to taking that deep breath. That's the first thing I do when I usually will talk with somebody out of the blue. I was just like, excuse me, I don't, I don't want to interrupt, but can we just take like seven seconds and just take a deep breath together, right? And just invited us of being alive. And if yeah. we're alive, that there is this energy and this light within us, and it's the word. It's like God speaking and calling you forth for a time such as this. Why? Because he knit you together, right? His thoughts about you outnumber the grains of sand. Oh, boy. Are you there? Ah, oh, Salisbury steak and eggs on toast. I don't even know what that means. All right, there we are. <laughs> <You're there. laughs> but, uh, <laughs> see, you know, the enemy... There's that scripture that says, like, no no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Uh, I felt the Holy Spirit kind of had me amend it for the 21st century, is that no technology formed against me shall prosper. <laughs> so, like, you know, if if you ever, you know, oh, yeah, froze again. No, they, oh, there you go. Oh. Holy Ghost, tune us in. Get the vibrational waves in harmony with the peace of the universe. Um, oh, 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 there we go. Right? But that anyway. I think that is that process, though, of taking that deep breath. It's just like, yeah, this just being his presence. And the thing is this, you've probably never even felt this presence before, but this is God. Right? This is our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be his name. And his name, right? The Yahweh, the Yahweh. The yeah. breath, right? The life. And it's it's just like, you know, the Bible says that we're yoked with Christ. When you yeah. when you yoke oxen together, what is that yoke there for? What is its purpose? Well, it's to usher the plow coming behind it. Right, to charge forward and bring movement to this plow, this tool of what the Holy Spirit just to come and just boom. Because remember, their hearts, our hearts are the soil, right? The yeah. seed is the gospel, right? The gospel is in seed form, and for a lot of people, their hearts are hardened. Why? Because oh well, you know, my parents were Christian, and you know they abused me, or you know I went to church once and the pastor touched me. You know, there's all these things that the enemy is doing, you know, either just blatant evil or doing it in a in the name of God, right? But it, it, it's these things that we've attributed and blamed God for, but it's for us to live and just kind of shift, right? That just like, yeah. it, it is like looking like a frequency, right? Because when we had the radio, we had, like when I was a kid and the radio had knobs, and that's how you tune the radio, and you got to get it yeah. just right, right? Kind of going back to that. Just, just like too far, and it just like, <laughs> and then just like oh, oh, there it is, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it is that is like why that 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 breath, that being still, that place of just contemplating purpose. It's mm. allowing the Holy Spirit just to get your heart just to receive eternity, the kingdom of yeah. heaven, right? Because he places eternity right smack dab in your heart. And that's why it is imperative that the life that you have to go after has to be one better than you can hope for or imagine. Because mm -hmm. that's where truly the, the true power of the cross, the true power of the blood of the lamb will be exhibited for the whole world to see. Right, and yeah. it's not because, and it's not going to be because we're preaching at you, right? It says that the goodness of God leads you to repentance. The goodness of God, right? If yeah. you see somebody walking down the street with a limp, be brave enough to go over and lay your hands on them and to speak to that ailment and command it to leave, and expect that God yeah. loves. That person enough that he wants to heal them and he wants to use you as the instrument or the tool for which to enable 
enable that and enact that here on earth. Yeah. Right? But there's an antichrist spirit, right? That's a form of godliness and it's denying that all that power. Why? Because it's still saying and focusing on the sin. It's still focusing on the fact that you're a sinner. And I was like, well, that's not the gospel. The gospel is repent. Yes, repent. Change the way you're thinking about yourself. Why? Because the kingdom of heaven is now at hand within man. Because he yeah. was born in a virgin. He's born of a woman, but he was not born of a man. That's why he's the second Adam. Mm. Who's the second Eve? Well, the church, right? Us, yes, exactly. Yeah. Right? As one. That's what's that's what's so important about us. That's why the enemy is spending so much time at what? Dividing us. Dude, I've I've seen so much of it recently. It's just like um on Facebook, like uh one of my one of my friends, um like yeah, he uh he's quite a, a well known like uh like I don't know, like prophet guy and like he's quite he's got quite a big ministry and and like I saw someone post the other day and like it was a quote from him and it was like this is complete heresy and then just there's this whole thread of people like why this is biblically inaccurate and it's like well actually you never spend time with this guy. Like mm. I God is moving powerfully through this guy and like they're just they're so caught up on just like what they think, you know, is uh, from a theology, a theolo- theological standpoint. Mm-hmm. It's like, as far as they're concerned, he's got it wrong. So therefore his whole ministry is, is heresy. And it's like, well, no, it's like, and it's, it's just a, like that thing of like, there seems to be a lot of division and like, there's like people like, I've seen like a lot of like people slating like, you know, all sorts of people um and it's yeah it's just interesting that there's a lot of it recently that um yeah yeah and i mean like abs- absolutely like question like the bible teaches us to question everything and it's like you know from a discerning point of view um but also i i'm seeing so much just like yeah just the uh, I guess like just different like points of uh, like different types of Christianity, like different denominations. Yeah. Just because they have yeah. different viewpoints, people are calling them out as heretical, and it's like, oh no, that's not the case at all. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it is the case, and, and, and there's, for sure, like, but yeah. Yeah, there's like that knee jerk reaction where you instantaneously, whether you're meaning to or not, have judged them. Yeah. Right, and it says, "Judge no man according to the flesh," right? Yeah. And, and, but yet we're doing that all the time, and whether we mean to or not, like in our country, it's you know you can see like this, you know, the word being called a racist is being thrown out there everywhere, and I mm-hmm. believe that there are a lot of branches in, in our media and in our government, especially in our law enforcement, where racism is is uh, prevalent and the root is in pure evil right and it is also kind of well what are we doing to fix it like what are we doing to establish the kingdom of heaven in spite of that and for me it is understanding that we're agents of reconciliation that's one thing this prophet prayed over me and he's like I don't say this often but you're an agent of reconciliation. And yeah. I was just like, okay. And when I moved to the South, I understood what that really meant because if we're looking at the fact that we enslaved for centuries, and not only that, once we finally get you free, we're still going to have like these boundaries that we're going to try to keep you in. And we're going to have the cards kind of stacked against you. Um, but yeah, but you're free now. And it's for me as a kid growing up on the West Coast, coming to the South is saying, yeah, I'm sorry, but this is not, 
the way it should be. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And just actually saying, I'm sorry. And I think, I think as well, it's because of like how, um, is it how history is, is come about and stuff. And like, there's still a lot of that, like almost, um, I don't know, like, are you going to like, as a, as a white man, are you going to, you know, treat me like, like, you know, your yeah. or like, and I think that there's a lot of just fear and, and like, just people like the, the social media and everything amplifies that, you know, it has like these isolated incidents that have been caught on camera and suddenly everyone's like, you know, like the police are the worst. And it's like, well, no, actually, you know, like yeah. handful of maybe, yeah. lots of, you know, cops and they're being like, and, and, you know, like they're, their actions are being shown online and everyone's quick to jump on. So there was an example the other day, um, probably about a month ago now, there was a video uh, taken from London and it was a police officer. And the video that was shown was him, uh, his, his wife was arguing with him, uh, with, a, with the police officer. And this guy was like, I will arrest you in a moment like you need uh and like this guy wasn't complying and then this police officer grabbed him threw him to the ground and the social media went nuts it was just like blah blah blah, blah. this guy is you know just pr- police brutality blah 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 yeah. instantly it created this like fear and this like whole all cops are you know yeah corrupt and and then, like, a few days later, it came to light, another video from a different angle. And, like, the police officer, like, this guy had parked um, on the edge of the street on, like, a double yellow line, so he wasn't supposed to park there. Uh, I know you guys, do you have, like, double red lines or what? Um, I don't know, we like, have like, lines. You- <laughs> <laughs> Let yeah, white, yeah. yellow sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> In England, it's if there's two yellow lines on the road, you're not supposed to park there ever, uh-huh. like at all. Um, and this guy had parked there, and he'd got out of his car, and the police officer was there. He's like, "Excuse me, sir, you're not supposed to park there. You need to move your vehicle." And like, so the first video showed the like this guy being grappled and thrown to the ground. Yeah. And then the second video showed the. 15 to 20 minute argument with this guy prior and the police officer had come to the end of his tether and was like i'm gonna need to use force if you do not comply yeah and like his it was just blowing it up out of proportion and like yeah and it and it's just so interesting that like that fear almost of like um yeah yeah just like just just how yeah just how like this is how I've been treated before, or like is it going to happen again? Happen again, or like this is what you know we're seeing online or on social media, and yeah. it's like this is happening everywhere, and then we're missing the other side of the story when actually it's not. You know, yeah, it's not a case of fear. It's like this guy was resisting arrest, and he was being an idiot. Yeah, and like if he'd complied and like been respectful to the police officer he wouldn't have been thrown to, like you know yeah and it, it's yeah it's just interesting that like yeah that was a complete that was a complete rabbit trail but like yeah, yeah well no i mean i think it goes back to um wow i just he completely took that thought right out of my head <laughs> but the one thing that i was thinking about one thing that i do is because you know I know a lot of people who are police officers. I know like that's a that's a job I would never want to have. Um, so whenever I see like a police officer about like at a sporting event or a concert, or whatever, uh, I'll always go up to him and I'll say, "Hey, listen, blessed are the peacemakers, right?" And it's understanding that like you're here to maintain the peace, and that's whether I look at it in in you know and, and that is a enforcing the law. But it's like that, it's that fine line that they walk that, uh, 
yeah, we don't have a clue. But at the same time as well, we don't have a clue of – I lived in a neighborhood in East Palo Alto, California that I used to get pulled over all the time by cops because I was white. Because I was the only white dude in that neighborhood. And if I'm a white dude in that neighborhood, it's because I'm there to buy one thing only and that's some crack and get out. And so I would get pulled over all the time. And, you know, at the same time, it's understanding like the real fear of the possibility of something bad happening because of a cop being scared. That's yeah. just that's just yeah. the reality. And it's because we're just being fed, you know, one thing that's really crazy in this country is that our prison systems are for profit, meaning people are running businesses and making money. And the only way you're going to make money with a prison is you have to have prisoners. And so these people are the ones that are going and giving lots of money to like our senators and our congressmen to keep, you know, laws like keeping marijuana illegal why because a lot of people that are in those jail cells are people there for something like just marijuana you know and it's like it it is this place of um it is and this is why i think the church needs to step it up is that we have to trust god and his word and more importantly the his justice right and with that comes his grace and his mercy you know, there's all these facets that we're we're just like right there. We've had like this, you know, we're we have this idea of what could be, but at the same time, everything else that the devil is trying to show us is like, well, this is why it can't be. And I'm saying yeah. no. The the cross says so. The blood paid for, kingdom come. Yeah. Repent. Because the kingdom of heaven's at hand, and just, bah, just fire on that. I, yeah, I think I think back backtracking real real quick. Have you have you seen the video? Um, I'm not racist by Joyce Lu- Luca. I think his name is. Uh. Uh-uh. Joint. I can't remember the dude's name, but um, he's this rapper, and it's quite a controversial video. Like I will give you that heads up before you go into it. Sure. But, um, but it's this this video that like uh, he's he's like a black rapper, and the first thing you see is this like big white trucker dude wearing a, a Make America Great Again hat. Yeah, the MAGA. Simply, it's just like the the video title is like I'm not racist, and straight away this guy goes into this long, uh, quite. What's the word? I don't know, but a rant about like black people and and like the whole point of this video is like you have two opposing sides. You have this very extreme, like anti, you know, um, like this very extreme racist white guy, mm-hmm. and the other side you have this very extreme racist black guy, like mm-hmm. against white people. And, like, the whole point of this video is it's just, like, this is the cultures that we both, like, both sides have been brought up in. You've been, like, so some of the points are, like, um, like, these black people are, you know, they're not, you're you're not working and I'm paying for you and, like, and then you're just going to go out and sell drugs to make, you know, uh, and, like, and then you won't see your kids and stuff and and then from the other guy's perspective he's like i can't get work and i'm in drugs to make sure my family has food yeah and the whole point in this video is it's like you got these two opposite perspectives but it's just because they don't have this is just a whole divide of understanding and a lack of understanding where each person's coming from and i think it's some i think it's a lot of that uh, in the church as well, not necessarily like racist. I'm sure there is, but mm-hmm. like, but actually, like, um, just a divide on like, you know, this person has a different theological standpoint to me. Therefore, you know, they're wrong, mm-hmm. and like, you know, uh, and it's like, well, you know, I don't know. It's that thing of like, we. 
you know, drawing it is a fine line between like being too liberal with like, you know, I mean, obviously there's, there's a point of correction for people. Sure. Um, sure. And I, I, but there's also this extremity that like, so for example, the church I went to, I was always brought up thinking that like homosexuality is like the worst sin in the world. Mm-hmm. And like, I've had, I've had some like life lessons on, on since then, and it's like, uh, you know, obviously, like as a as a Bible believing Christian, it's like I personally don't think it's right homosexuality, but then, like, from I, I've I've you know I've had experiences where like the people in the church that you know maybe identify as homosexual. Like they're living in fear, or just like absolutely, you know, treated the worst because the church has, yeah, been we've been grown up thinking like that's the worst sin. Whereas like you know we've been taught it from a pastor that it's like having an affair or whatever, or yeah, you know. yeah, and then it, uh, yeah, and I think there's just yeah, I don't know where this point was going, but there's just, <laughs> just <laughs> hey, you'll hear that that's the that's this podcast, and <laughs> Ryan's like this chase rabbit trails, man. <laughs> yeah, but there's just, like there's this just huge divide, and it's like that there seems to be. Yeah, I don't. I, yeah, again, I don't know where it was going. But just yeah, just divide that shouldn't be there. And I think the yeah, okay, here we are. Here we go. I think the issue is, it's like we've become too focused on like who's right, yeah, who's wrong, definitely, what's definitely, right, what's wrong. That we've missed. That's like I think J- Jake Hamilton says it's best. It's like, um, you know, it's not how far can I push this it's how holy can I be? It's like, he was like, you know, it's not how much I can drink or how much secular music I can listen to, you know, what level of film can I watch? Can I watch R rated movies or is it only Disney? Yeah. Like, and it, and it's like, it's not that he, he said, he said, was like, those are stupid questions. The, the, the question should be how holy can I be? So it's how, much you want to pursue God and how holy you want to be, not necessarily like, what can I get away with here? Like, yeah. Yeah. And, um, I've heard another preacher, uh, Damon Thompson. Um, he's brilliant. If you haven't listened to him, by the way, David but, Thompson, da- Damon Thompson. Yeah. Damon. Um, yeah. Um, he, one of my favorite things that he says is that a, uh, a Christian living out of um, oh, so one way you're following the rules. Legalistic Christian, yeah, sorry. Okay, my brain. It's, it's good. Like, oh, it's like it's one thirty your time, dude. I, I I didn't realize. I'm like I gotta probably let you go here soon. You gotta get some rest. But yeah, like so it's one thirty in the morning here. But so my brain is shot. But um, like one of my favorite things he says is a legalistic Christian will live a very similar lifestyle to a holy believer, but from a different perspective, from a di- for a different reason. Mm. So, like, the legalistic Christian will do it because they've been taught, the, because of fear of what happens if they don't do it that way, whereas a holy person will live a similar life because they're choosing to live holy, because they're choosing to pursue God. Um, but, yeah, and I thought it was an interesting... You know. Yeah, that's good. Perspective. Yeah. I think that's a great word that uh, many believers need to get more of. And that's, yeah. uh, I mean, for us to be in a place where we can empathize. You know, we're, we're just kind of, we're so quick to send people and cast them into hell. And just say, yeah. well, yep, they, they deserve it. And it's like, well, yeah, we all did. Like, all yeah. have fallen short of the glory of God. And, uh, and it's for us to reconcile them back into the heart of the Father, right? Yeah. Because, you know, we'll, we'll just kind of tie it up. But it is, I've come to see is that we can either live in two of mind where you're living heaven on earth or hell on earth. Yeah. And 
most of the time we're we're like we're just trying to exist in this gray area right and that's just with the carnal mind of just living this life it's like well yes but eventually that gray area is just going to wear you out and you'll just get older and you'll get tired and you well I'm not as fire as I used to be you know I I used to be an evangelist and this and that but you know this that and the other kind of and it's just to go well guess what this is the day that the Lord has made for us yeah. to simply just rejoice and be glad in it and if we're breathing guess what you're alive. There's something just to be thankful for, and we're going to start from there. You know, yeah. get some perspective. Why? Because there's many people, millions of people, if that, that they took their final breath today. And they would love nothing more just to have one more day. And that's how I want to live life, man, is that if this day was my last. So right. that for today line, uh, this will be your only chance to live today for God. Yep. Yep. Yeah. But um I was I was gonna say real quick, like I, I think that like uh there's so many people that will happily quote John three sixteen, like for God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son that whoever mm-hmm. believed in him will not perish but have eternal life. But what's verse seventeen? But they missed the seventeen, yeah, exactly. <laughs> But Christ uh, Christ came to the world uh, to save it and not condemn it. But we're so like, you know, yeah. we're Christians, which means Christ like but we're, we're happily, like, condemn people yeah. for their, yeah. you know. Whereas Christ is like, I came to save this world, not to condemn it. So, and and also, like, that Bible verse, it says it's the Holy Spirit that convicts. So, yeah. it's like, no matter of me telling you you're doing something wrong, it's going to convict you. It's right? the Holy Spirit that has to, yeah, it, be the one that's like, yeah. It says it's the gift of repentance, too. Right, yeah. because it's goodness. It's the goodness of God. Like it, it is. Because this is the thing I, I I think about that makes me laugh is that um, I think that that Yeshua, right, is is Hebrew name. We call him Jesus in America. We called him Jesus for centuries when when the Greeks, right, kind of made it the official language or the official religion, or was it the Romans? I think it was the Romans. Constantine. He made Christianity the official religion of the empire, and then yeah. he changed his name to Jesus, right? But his name is Yeshua, and I think it's just something like it, you kind of see like there was just subtle shifts and changes made that we've kind of just been like, oh well, yeah, but you know it's not a harm. I'm like, well, I don't, yeah, I don't think it's a harm in the fact that God you know, is upset with us because he we keep calling him by the wrong name. He's like, hello, I'm not Roman. I'm Hebrew. I'm a Jew, yeah. <laughs> you know. <It's, laughs> but, uh, but at the same time, it is just saying that we have to allow the Holy Spirit alone to be our teacher. Yeah. Right? There is nothing wrong with these, these pastors and leaders, but we also see like when – these guys that write these books and there are these Christian influencers saying like, you know what? I really don't think, uh, I believe in Jesus anymore that, you know, because they're, they're equating how the world is looking at Christianity and Christians and how they're just deemed hypocritical and hate filled and judgmental. And to a degree they are. And I want to say that. And, that's the tactic that the devil's been using, right? Yeah. Using the yeah. form of godliness, but denying the power to do anything about changing the way that we view God. Why? Because it's not the goodness of God that we're trying to get to repent. It's we're getting you self-conscious and showing you what a sinner you are to try to get you to repent. It's like, no, you have to understand that how good and wonderful and amazing and perfect you are in his sight because he's looking at you through the filter of his blood of his son, of the blood of the lamb. Yeah. Right? Brian's book, right? Uh, Save Me From Myself. Yes. Right? Yeah. I read that book in one night. And I, I knew I was in for a long evening because of right there in that beginning is, is Revelation twelve eleven. They overcame the evil one by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they do not love their own lives unto death. Yeah. You know? 
So I think that's just kind of a great place to tie it up. Hedy, any closing statements or or anything you want to share with with the future <laughs> from here, from the past of what is it, August eighteenth? Uh, yeah. We uh, if we if we work out time travel at this time, if we uh, have a message for ourselves, which should happen at one forty one a.m. right now, go. Um. Yeah. Who is it? <laughs> Sean! <laughs> <laughs> and like, I'll go like into a Tron phase, and then I'll just get digitized out and just disappear. <laughs> How would that be if I was actually at your door right now? Like, yeah, uh, that would be amazing. Well, but yeah, no, um, yeah, dude, uh, yeah. Thank you for having me. Like, it's been uh, for the, like you know what I, you know, it's like one of those things. Is like. I don't know what we're gonna talk about, like, and how it's gonna go. It's just like I had no idea it was gonna go this Me way. Either. <laughs> you might have noticed idea. that. <laughs> it completely like <laughs> random. No, yeah, but uh, it's been it's been great, man. I've really enjoyed uh, just chatting, time travel, For real. racism. For real. Like, yeah. <laughs> Kingdom yeah. days in an evil age, man. We're the sons of thunder. <laughs> That's an album, man. I'm gonna have to dig that out and and put it on again. Yeah, yeah. Well, bless you. And um, man, I just want to end this time of just uh, of just saying, Father, I just thank you for John. I thank you for his assignment there in London. God, I, I love that you're the master chess player. And I thank you for the the promotion for John from, you know, you know you're not a pawn. But uh, to kind of go from the bishop uh, to the, because you're not a rook either, but from the bishop into that queen state of mine, Lord, of being your bride, of understanding that you created him in mind before time began because you knew the, you knew your son as second Adam. And you knew that he, you would have John as a part of the body of your bride. And that bride is perfect. So Lord, I thank you for perfecting in him the mindset of what it looks like to be a Christian for a time such as this. Lord, while we have to deal with time, we have to deal with this reality, we're also going to deal with it in mind of knowing that you are for us, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and it is within us to be released through us, all of the glory going right back to you, Father. So I just bless you, John. I bless uh, everything you put your hands to. I thank you that uh, you're just going to have divine appointments with people that are thinking they're just there to take a Harry Potter tour, and they're going to see this big grizzly Dumble. Is it Dumbledore, the the big kind of bodyguard guy? No, I I, I, I tell everyone I'm Hagrid. Hagrid, sorry. Hagrid. I did see the movies. I didn't watch all the movies either. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) Uh, but yeah, I, I, real uh, quick. I, yes. I know. I think I feel like we could talk for hours, but we really that could. Was so, that was so funny. you um, when you were praying, like I literally have God's porn tattooed across my shoulder blade. Oh, shit. um, with, with a with a porn piece right in the middle, and like I had a revelation years ago. And God was like, you know when you're playing chess and the pawn gets to the other side and you can literally upgrade that pawn to whatever, you know, whatever piece you need it to Except be. Except for what? It can, it, it get promoted. Yeah, it can't be the king. You know, Lucifer, yeah, yeah. Lucifer wanted to be the king. And he's like, yeah. nope. Why? Because that place is special for my queen. And we're two yep. gonna become one. Okay, oh, that's my little, <laughs> my little monologue. <laughs> yeah, man, dude. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, dude. Um, yeah, definitely Anytime. have to have another, another yeah. podcast chat at some point. For real. Done. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm definitely excited just to hear more stories of. Oh, you'll never guess what happened like you're not gonna believe this and that's exactly gonna be like oh holy ghost what'd you do (laughs) Uh, 
Well, right on, homie, man. Love you. Get some rest. Have some uh, prophetic dreams because that's one thing I w- we'll talk about next time as I wanted to get into kind of dream states of consciousness and kind of how those are drawing news, I think, uh, in training us to uh, be more effective. For us to kind of understand that when we're awake is that we're the lucid dream of heaven, right? Yeah. And it's to wake people up out of the hell on earth, the nightmares that they're in. By what they see, because that's well, not next, the kingdom of heaven. Next time, hit me up with some content, then, and we can aim. Yeah, you know, I I gotta get better at that. You know, I I I went through your Facebook page, and I was just looking at all the things you've been in, like the DJing, and and it was just yeah. like, oh, he does Harry Potter tours. And did uh, I'll uh, I'll send you a link to the video, and you can probably put a link in the description of the podcast if sure, you want. Sure, please. There's a link. There's a link where they actually cosplayed me as Hagrid oh. uh, for the, the promotional video on our Harry Potter tour. And it's, yeah, so... Uh, beautiful. Yeah, Just um, beautiful. You're a beautiful <laughs> human being, Mr. Derry. And Thanks, uh, I'm honored to be your friend. And uh, I can't wait to uh, to visit you in London. Yes, you did. Just hit me up. You always say, man. Awesome. So. Well, love you, brother, man. Peace be with you. Take care, man. Bye.